I welcome you all in the today's session. Today we have Dr. Paranjoy Guha Thakurta to talk on natural resources, chronic capitalism and failure of governance. And today uh, the, uh, um, the Suhas Palshikar sir will chair the program. And today we are having a separate program of a book release written by Palshikar sir that is Desh Pradesh. So this is uh, another program. Now I request uh, director of the Unique Academy to Karam Zadav sir to welcome Paranjay Guha Thakurta sir. And I request <laughs> Vijay Kunjir sir to welcome uh, Parshikar sir. The joint <laughs> venture of the Unique Academy and Parivartanacha Vatsaru that is Unique Foundation. We are publishing a series of books under the Unique Foundation and one of the important and major book under this series is Desh Pradesh, a book on state elections in India authored by Parshikar sir. And now we have come up with the second edition of this book and I request all the dignitaries on the dais to release the book. First edition of this book was sold in a very short span of time and now this is the second edition of this book. Parshikar sir has written this book. We all know uh, Parshikar sir, political analyst and commentator. He has written and co-authored and edited several books like Maharashtra Til Satta Sangarsha, Indian Democracy, Meanings and Practices, Party Competition in Indian States. He is a convener of National Election Studies and Director of Lokniti Network in CSDS. I request Parshikar sir to talk on this, this book, Desh Pradesh. The guest and speaker of this evening, Paranjayada. Uh, my friends from the uh, Unique Foundation and Unique Academy and friends. I am somewhat in an embarrassing position because I have also been asked to chair the lecture and at the same time eat into the time of the speaker by, by, by uh, speaking about this book. Uh, but at the same time, I must start by acknowledging uh, my gratefulness to the organizers and the publishers, not only for having published the book for the first time, but also for the second time, and then arranging for its release this evening. Uh, there are two or three things that I would like to say on this occasion of the release of the second edition of the book, Desh Pradesh, which deals with the politics of India's states. The first is Though you wouldn't know, many here sitting in the hall would know that for some time there has been a lot of discussion about the uh, pride that Marathi people should take in the Marathi language. And I have always believed that that pride is best shown, acknowledged and recognized by working in Marathi rather than by declaring that I am proud of Marathi language. Uh, therefore, I thought that writing on politics, which is my subject of study, writing on politics in Marathi could be seen as one way of approaching this issue of how to create pride in one's language and at the same time, without being proud, how to create knowledge sources in one's language. So, Desh Pradesh is a book that introduces politics of India's states in Marathi. I may be mistaken, but I don't know of other book in Marathi which similarly discusses states' politics in Marathi. The second approach to this book is obviously, as I said, my own personal interest in India's politics. And one can study India's politics in different ways one could approach it by way of looking at political parties in India. One could approach it by looking at elections in India. One more way, of course, and equally important, perhaps very interesting and rewarding way of doing that could be to look at India's states. In the last 10 years, there has been some discussion amongst political scientists about what is the relevant importance, relative importance of politics of the states However, for long it has been recognized that politics of the states is one way in which one can understand India's politics. 
whether in times of one party dominance or in times of multi party coalitional competitions and therefore i thought that one way of looking at india's politics would be rather than looking at the grand picture look at what is happening in different states so in this book what i did and again uh, parivartana cha watsaru has been a platform where this happened initially is that each state was discussed as a chapter and in each state i have tried to in each chapter i have tried to introduce uh, the main themes that dominate the politics of that particular state and then additionally of course i have right uh, like to sort of connect all these things in the introductory chapter as to why one should be studying states politics and what it means for democratic or competitive politics in india uh, one would wish that this book would have more chapters and thus more states covered in it but it has not happened yet and i am sorry for that but whatever states i have discussed uh, basically i have tried to look at the larger political economic context the larger social context and then looking specifically at the dominating themes in the politics of that state as things changed over time from the 1950s or 60s to the present moment the second edition has also given me an opportunity to at least revise some chapters in the light of the changes that have happened since the publication of the first edition because the first edition published just around the time when elections were taking place for the 16th lok sabha and though one knew what was going to happen in those elections after it actually happened whether assessment changes or not is an important question and i have tried to answer that question in a couple of chapters at least for example the chapter on up the chapter on madhya pradesh and particularly in the introductory chapter but anyway i am not here to give more details about the book because anyway it's the second edition i am sure many of you might have seen read or used the first edition already and therefore i once again take this opportunity to thank the organizers and the publishers and also thank paranjay da for having agreed to release this second edition of the book thank you very much thanks a lot sir i would like to introduce today's main speaker uh, paranjay guha thakurta thakurta sir is an independent journalist and an educator he started his career as a journalist in june 1977 and has been employed with various media organizations including companies bringing out publications such as business india business world telegraph india today and the pioneer he worked with television 18 and now network 18 for almost 6 years between 1995 to 2001 he is a, he is a visiting faculty member at reputed educational institutions including the indian institute of management at ahmedabad kolkata bangalore and shillong jawaharlal nehru delhi university jamia millia islamia jamia hamdard university the indian institute of foreign trade the asian college of journalism chennai the indian institute of technology kanpur and several other institutions he served as a member of the press council of india nominated by the university grants commission between january 2008 and january 2011 in april 2010 as a member of a two member sub committee of the council he co-authored a report entitled Pub, uh, paid news how corruption in the indian media undermines democracy so in that way he knows our maharashtra congress leader ashok chavan very well uh, he is he has directed and produced so many documentary films like idiot box or window of hope hot as well a profile a profile of dhanbad Dhan grabbing eyeballs advert advertorial selling news or products and there are so on there are number of documentaries he has produced and directed uh, and he has written media ethics truth fairness and objectivity making and breaking news published by oxford university press india in march 2009 and the second enlarged edition of the book was published in december 2011 he is the lead author of gas wars crony capitalism and the ambani's with subir ghosh and jyotirmay choudhury published in april 2014 and he can have a long discussion or a separate talk on how difficult it is when it comes to write a book about ambani's he has very shocking experiences while writing these books mukesh ambani and anil ambani and the companies they control they have 
served him legal notices in April and May 2014 by lawyers of the company. So uh, that is one of the important book and I would like to announce that the book will be in Marathi very soon and Unique Academy and Unique Foundation is going to publish its Marathi translation. So I think this is enough to talk about. Yeah, and the book is available outside the stall uh, of, of this hall and book, uh, the, you can buy this book and one of the documentary, uh, the CD of the one of the documentary is also there. So you can buy this book and don't wait for the Marathi edition to come. You can buy this English edition here also. Uh, now I request uh, Thakurta sir to talk on, to express his views on chronic capitalism, natural resources and the failure of governance. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for being here on a Sunday evening. And I wish to thank the organizers of this event, the Unique Academy, in particular Tukaram Ji, Vijay Ji. And I'm truly honored and privileged that today I have Dr. Suhaj Palshikar, who I respect greatly. I consider him to be one of India's foremost political scientists. And I read his articles regularly in the Indian Express. And so for me, it's a double honor and a double privilege to be here with you this afternoon. My third language is Hindi. My mother is Bangla. तो मैं बीच-बीच में अगर थोड़ा बहुत आप लोगों के साथ हिंदी में भी बात करने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ और अंग्रेजी और हिंदी दोनों मिलाके मैं आप लोगों को इस जो जो विषय के ऊपर हमें आज आप लोग बुलाया इस विषय के ऊपर ये जो क्रोनी कैपिटलिज्म इसका हिंदी बांग्ला में एकदम सीधा अनुवाद नहीं होता है हाँ कैपिटलिज्म का अनुवाद होता है पूंजीवाद ठीक है हम जानते हैं क्रोनी मतलब क्या है क्रोनी हिंदी में आकाशवाणी बोलते हैं यारानी पूंजीवाद यानी कि अपने यारों के लिए पूंजीवाद है ये सचमुच खुले बाजार फ्री एंटरप्राइज कैपिटलिज्म नहीं है ये फॉर माई फैमिली फॉर माई फ्रेंड्स मेरा भाई मेरा भतीजा मेरा दोस्तों के लिए पूंजीवाद है तो मैं जिस विषय के ऊपर आप लोगों के साथ बात करना चाहता हूँ ये भारतवर्ष के जो प्राकृतिक संसाधन है नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज ये संपत्ति ये आपका है मेरा है और सिर्फ मेरा और आपका नहीं है आपका बेटा का भी है और आपका पोता जो अभी भी उनका जन्म नहीं हुआ उनके लिए भी है दीज आर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज दैट बिलोंग टू द पीपल ऑफ दिस कंट्री whether it be coal, whether it be natural gas, whether it be iron ore, it could even be something that you cannot see, like spectrum, telecommunication spectrum, which enables you to communicate with one another using a mobile telephone. These are all natural resources. And these belong to every single citizen of this country and their children and their children. So what happens when the government, the government is supposed to be the representative of the people. We elect our MPs under an act called the Representation of the People Act. Hamari jo raj neta hai, hamari jo sansad hai, hamari jo sarkar hai, they are supposed to represent the people of this country. But what happens when they fail to represent the people of the country? As the representative of the people of the country, they are supposed to act as a custodian, like a trustee of these resources. You are supposed to ensure that these resources are allocated in a fair manner, in a balanced manner, in a transparent manner. Ye prakritik sansadhan agar paradarshitas ke saath, agar aap sab klo nahi denge, then you have crony capitalism. If these resources are misallocated, they are mispriced, 
then the benefits of these resources, they don't go to the people of this country or the majority of the people of this country, but they are appropriated by a few, a privileged small section of the people. Now, this is exactly what has happened in our country in the recent past. And before I talk about natural gas, I want to tell you, I'll give you three instances. Today, in India, there is a big debate going on about the land acquisition law. And Narendra Modi ji ka jo sarkar hai, ek, ek adhyadesh laya hai, ordinance, ki ek jo kanun hai, land acquisition ka kanun hai, jo purane humare jo British zamane ka jo 120 saal purane jo kanun hai, usno badalne ke liye. Aur aaj ek bohut ek vivadit vishay ho gaya. This has become a highly contentious and a debatable issue. Aur abhi akbar mein aa raha hai ki there will be a joint session of parliament to pass the new Amendment to the law. Why? We know why. The Bharatiya Janata Party does not have a majority in the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of parliament. It has a majority in the Lok Sabha. <coughs> it has 282 out of the 543 members of the Lok Sabha. And the NDA, the National Democratic Alliance, has about 332 or somewhere around there in the Lok Sabha. But in the Rajya Sabha, the BJP is in a minority. So if there's a joint session of parliament, that's the way they can pass the bill. What is the debate? The debate is whether the law that was enacted by parliament in 2013 should be amended. And there are many issues about that. But the most important issue is how easy should it be to acquire land by the government for itself, for a public sector organization, for a public-private partnership, or for a private organization. ये जो भूमि अधिग्रहण का जो विषय है बहुत ही एक विवादित विषय हो गया और सिर्फ विरोधी दल नहीं सिर्फ कांग्रेस नहीं सिर्फ आम आदमी पार्टी नहीं सिम कम्युनिस्ट नहीं जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी का जो साथ जो है एनडीए में जैसे शिरोमणि अकाली दल जैसे रामविलास पासवान का लोक जनशक्ति पार्टी जैसे आपका यहां का राज्य से शिवसेना इन लोग भी विरोध कर रहे और साथ-साथ संघ परिवार के अंदर भी ऐसे लोग हैं स्वदेशी जागरण मंच भारतीय किसान संघ इन लोग भी विरोध कर रहे कह रहे कि भैया ये तो आप कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर को आप भूमि दे रहे जो कृषक है जिसका जमीन है जिसका जीवी का ये जमीन के ऊपर निर्भर करते हैं इनका क्या होगा तो इस विषय के ऊपर देखेंगे आप आने वाले हफ्तों में आने वाले महीनों में काफी एक हलचल हमारे राजनीतिक माहौल में शुरू हो गया और समय बताएंगे क्या होगा कि नहीं होगा। But what is behind this? Why is it so contentious? Why is it so debatable? Why is this whole issue of land acquisition so important? Because land is a very scarce resource in our country. ये बहुत ही एक कीमती संसदन है हमारे देश में। अगर पूरा विश्व में अगर देखेंगे हमारे देश में 125 करोड़ लोग रहते हैं हमारा आबादी है हमारा लोक संख्या है 17 फीसदी 17 परसेंट ऑफ़ द प्लैनेट्स पापुलेशन ऑन द प्लैनेट्स एर्थ दे आर लिविंग इन इंडिया बट वी हैव ओनली जस्ट टू एंड हाफ परसेंट ढाई फीसदी ज़मीन ऑफ़ द होल प्लैनेट इज़ इन इंडिया सो इट्स नॉट सरप्राइजिंग व्हाई लैंड इज़ सो स The story of water is the same story. We have enough water, but the water falls from the sky largely for four months in a year. And if we could store all the water and manage all the water, we would have no problem. But our problem is the management of the water. So we have a situation where at least 40% of the total land area, the cropped area in this country, they depend on the monsoon. So, all of us have to pray to God. The farmers have to pray to God. Our Vithya Mantri in the North Block, Arun Jaitli Ji, they have to pray to God. Because if you know what the situation in this country is, 
कितने किसान आत्महत्या किया है आप जानते हैं तो ये बहुत बड़ा एक समस्या है हमारे पूरा जो जीडीपी है सकल घरेलू उत्पाद है नेशनल इनकम है इसका बहुत एक छोटा फिजदी है आज कृषि क्षेत्र एग्रीकल्चर अकाउंट्स फॉर जस्ट अबाउट 16 17 परसेंट डिपेंड्स ऑन द न्यू जी डी पी कैलकुलेशन सिर्फ सिक्सटीन टू एटीन परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल जी डी पी बट हाफ योर पॉपुलेशन और मोर देन हाफ योर पॉपुलेशन इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन एग्रीकल्चर दैट्स वाई लैंड दैट्स वाई वॉटर हैज बिकम दे आर स्केस नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज नाउ लेट्स कम टू टू और थ्री वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इशूज और इस विषय के ऊपर आप सब लोग जानते हैं फिर भी मैं आपको दोबारा याद दिला देता हूँ हमारे देश में कुछ सालों से कुछ पिछले 10, 12, 15 साल में एक के बाद एक घोटाला हुआ क्यों हुआ वाई हैव वी हैड सो मेनी स्कैंडल्स लेट स्टार्ट विद द 2G स्पेक्ट्रम स्कैम 2G के मतलब सेकेंड जनरेशन आप जानते हैं ये कहानी फिर भी मैं इसका बहुत अल्प समय में आपको दो चार बात कहना चाहता हूं इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इज ए स्केस रिसोर्स क्योंकि आपके पास इतने इट्स अ फाइनाइट रिसोर्स यू हैव अ सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ स्पेक्ट्रम एंड ऑल द डिफरेंट टेलीकॉम कंपनीज हैव टू बी अलॉटेड अ सर्टेन बैंड विथ सो दैट यू कैन यूज इट टू कम्युनिकेट ऑन योर मोबाइल डिवाइस टूडे देर इज अ टेलीकॉम रेवोल्यूशन दैट इज हैपन इन आर कंट्री राइट इन दिस कंट्री ऑफ हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव करोर पीपल देर आर समवे इन द रीजन ऑफ I was told almost 900 million, 90 crore SIM cards, yani ki SIM subscriber identity module. Or log kehte hain ki 70 crore, 700 million ke aas pass aaj Bharatiya nagrik ke pass ek mobile cellular phone hai, jo Hindi mein kehte hain chalayman durbhash yantra. आप सब लोग आज अगर मोबाइल खो गया अरे भाई हम क्या करेंगे हमारा मोबाइल खो गया हम एसएमएस नहीं भेज पा रहे वी पैनिक वी हैव बिकम सो यूज टू दैट गैजेट इन आर हैंड कैन यू इमेजिन ट्वेंटी इयर्स गो हाउ मेनी पीपल हैड मोबाइल्स वेरी फ्यू पीपल हैड द गवर्नमेंट जस्टिफाइड द गिविंग अ वे ऑफ स्पेक्ट्रम एट वेरी वेरी चीप प्राइसेस He said, "If we had not given the spectrum at the low price, then ordinary people like you, and not just you, who are privileged, but literally the the the, the person who is selling vegetables on the street, the person who is pulling a rickshaw, how would he or she have been able to use use this gadget? But wait, how did this happen? In the year 2007." the government decided that it would give this spectrum on a first come first served basis jaise aap cinema ticket kharidte hain aap line lagaiye aapka number jab aayega aap cinema ka ticket kharid lijiye magar sabse adbhut baat ye hai ki even this rule was changed achanak the cut off date for the presenting the application was changed suddenly brought forward the conditions on which you have to given an application suddenly was changed it's like you were standing in the queue to buy a ticket aur bhaiya ha hamara mauka mil gaya hum box office tak pahunch gaye hain abhi mera mauka hai ticket khareedne ke liye first day first show hum sharukh khan aur pc ko hum dekhenge wah wah achanak aapka piche se koi gunda aake bola nahi aapka piche jo banda khara hai wo pehle ticket khareed lenge it was like that you changed the rules of the game and you allotted the spectrum to 122 companies 122 licenses then what happened you have a body called the cag the controller and auditor general of india it is a constitutional body it's a body which is meant to look into the finances the public finances and it said that this is not the way you should have allotted spectrum something very interesting happened just a few days before this report of the controller and auditor general of india was presented in parliament hamara jo bhutpurva dur sanchar mantri dmk ka a raja andi muthu raja saab ko istifa dena pada 
वो बहुत नाराज हो गए थे हम क्यों इस्तीफा देंगे हम ऐसे क्या किया हम ऐसे क्या किया जो लोगों मनमोहन सिंह को मालूम नहीं था चिदम्बरम जी को मालूम था मेरे को क्यों आप बोल रहे हो इस्तीफा देने के लिए नो बोला तुम्हें इस्तीफा देना ही पड़ेगा और फिर जब सी का रिपोर्ट सांसद में पेश किया गया उसमें क्या लिखा था अलग अलग लॉस फिगर्स उन्होंने बताया नुकसान कितना हुआ सरकार का कितना नुकसान हुआ और एक एस्टिमेट है एक लाख बहत्तर हजार करोड़ अरे बाप रे बाप एक लाख बहत्तर हजार को एक सात दो के बाद दस शून्य लगा दीजिए छोटा मोटा अमाउंट नहीं है ना आप बफोर्स का घोटाला आप भूल गए होंगे आप बच्चे थे उस समय सिर्फ चौसठ करोड़ रुपया का घोटाला था ये एक लाख बहत्तर हजार का घोटाला बाप रे बाप ये भारतवर्ष क्यों विश्व में सबसे बड़ा घोटाला हो गया क्योंकि आप इसको डॉलर भी कम कन्वर्ट दिस वन लैख सेवेंटी टू थाउजेंड करोड़ इन डॉलर्स इट कम्स टू थर्टी बिलियन यूएस डॉलर्स तीस अरब डॉलर यानी कि भाई भारतवर्ष का घोटाला बोझ विश्व में इतना बड़ा घोटाला कम हुआ था और सब लोग कहा कि नहीं नहीं ये घोटाला नहीं है कपिल सिब्बल के बोला ये जीरो लॉस है ये गलत कार्य है ये सी पूरा भारतवर्ष का छवि खराब कर दिया पूरा लोग हमारे देश में नहीं आ, आएंगे ये भाषा बार बार आप सुनते रहते हैं ये जो अभी अभी एक डॉक्यूमेंट्री हुआ वही वही कहानी आप बार बार सुनते भारतवर्ष का छवि खराब हो जाएगा टूरिस्ट आना बंद कर देंगे हमारे देश में वही कहानी हम सुना क्या होगा कोई आएगा हमारा देश में इतना बड़ा आपने हमारा पूरा निवेश का जो माहौल था इन्वेस्टमेंट क्लाइमेट हैज बीन कम्प्लीटली डिस्ट्रॉय दैट दैट वाज व्हाट द गवर्नमेंट सेड मिस्टर कपिल विद सिबिल फ्लोटेड व्हाट वाज कॉल्ड अ जीरो लॉस थियोरी एंड देन यू हैड केसेज आफ्टर केसेज वन केस राजा जी हैड टू गो टू जेल करोना दीज डॉटर हैड टू गो टू जेल और ऑन एवरीबडी सेट कंपल्शन ऑफ कोलिशन पॉलिटिक्स अरे बाप रे बाप गठबंधन राजनीति का मजबूरिया क्या मजबूरिया था मनमोहन सिंह जी का भैया उनके पास यूपीए में 16 या 17 डीएमके का सांसद थे ठीक है सरकार का बहुमत नहीं था सो दीज 17 16 और 17 एम ऑफ द डीएमके वर सपोर्टिंग द यूपीए बाबा यू फॉरगेट देन द फाइव इयर्स that mr karunanidhi was the chief minister of tamil nadu there were 34 mlas belonging to the congress party who gave the dmk a majority so who needed whom more did dr manmohan singh need mr karunanidhi more or did mr karunanidhi no more mr need mr manmohan singh no or did they both need each each, each, each other very much more aapne neera radia ka kahani aapne suna hai yahi sab chal rahe the so then what happened but the supreme court intervened This is 2007. Licenses are allotted in 2008, 2009, 2010. CAG report. Raja puts in his papers. Raja is arrested. February 2012. Supreme Court intervenes and cancels all those licenses. 122 licenses. And everybody says, "What will happen?" Our earth system is. बहुत खराब स्थिति होगा बी दैट एज इट मे वट हैपन वॉज दैट ऑक्शन दैट नीलाम जो नीलाम होना था द पब्लिक ऑक्शन इज हैपनिंग नाउ एंड द अमाउंट दैट द गवर्नमेंट इज गेटिंग इज ह्यूज दिस इज नॉट अ नोशनल फिगर एवरीबडी सेज सी जी ने एक नोशनल फिगर बताया प्रिजम्पटिव लॉस कि सचमुच नुकसान नहीं हुआ सरकार का पैसा जो पास जो पैसा आना था वो नहीं मिला ये भी बोला कि सी अपने पॉलिसीज के बारे में नीति के बारे में अपने टिप्पणी कर रहे आलोचना कर रहे ये सी का काम नहीं है बट द सी एजी वॉज प्रूव राइट एंड टूडेज ऑप्शन एंड द मनी दैट द गवर्नमेंट इज रेजिंग इंडिकेट्स दैट एक्चुअली दो फिगर्स वर एक्यूरेट और ये सिर्फ टेलीकॉम स्पेक्ट्रम ने ही यही कहानी आपका कोयला में हुआ द सेम स्टोरी आपने नाम सुना होगा ना कोल गेट फॉर योर सेंसिटिव टीथ कोल गेट यू कैन ब्रश योर टीथ विथ कोल गेट एवरी मॉर्निंग नो कोल गेट वॉज ऑल्सो अ बिगर स्कैंडल द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्पेक्ट्रम एंड कोल वॉज इज फॉलोइंग स्पेक्ट्रम 
is not a non-renewable resource. Okay, that thin air is there. If you use that technology properly, you can use that thin air over and over again. But not coal. Coal is a fossil fuel. Coal has been built and it is under the earth. It has formed many, many years. Geologists say literally tens of thousands of years. Why is coal so important? Aapka ye jo bijli jal rahe, pankha chal rahe, 50%, at least half, at least half, some would say more than half, of the total energy that is consumed in this country is coal based. Koila se aare. Aapka jitne sare aapka jo vidyut jo utpadan ho rahe, ye koila se aare. Now, what happened in the case of coal? The same story, but with a few differences. Not very different, but the same story. You don't auction it publicly. You set up a little committee. That committee sits behind closed doors and they decide, bhai, inko dena hai, inko dena hai, inko dena hai. Koi gutka bana rahe, wo abhi koila chaate hai, wo bhi bijli utpadan karne chaate hai. Koi CD bana rahe, unko bhi koila chahiye, wo bhi bijli utpadan kar rahe. Koi ispad bana ne chaate hai, koi cement bana ne chaate hai. आप श्री विजय दर्दा का नाम जरूर सुना होगा लोकमत पत्रिका आप पढ़ते हैं भारतवर्ष में इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट वाइडली सर्कुलेटेड न्यूज़पेपर्स मोस्ट पॉपुलर मराठी न्यूज़पेपर विजय दर्दा जी मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट फ्रॉम नागपुर हिज ब्रदर राजेंद्र दर्दा फॉर्मर एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर उनका दोस्त है वो अभिजीत ग्रुप आपने उनका नाम भी होगा इनको भी मिल गया इनको भी कोयला का ब्लॉक मिल गया ये भी बिजली उत्पादन करने चाहते हैं ये भी इस्पात बनाने चाहते हैं ये भी सीमेंट बनाने चाहते हैं एल्यूमिनियम बनाने चाहते हैं अभिजीत ग्रुप के जो जायसवाल जी बोला भाई आपके साथ ये श्री प्रकाश जायसवाल जी का क्या रिश्ता है बोले नहीं 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 वो हर जायसवाल के एक जायसवाल दूसरे जायसवाल के साथ रिश्ता है No, he is not my relative. So, brother, brother, your family had some conflict, and this is the picture of Sir Sri Prakash Jaiswal Ji. Who is he? He is the Prime Minister, the Koyla Prime Minister. His name is also coming. Subodh Khan Sahai Ji. He was also a Prime Minister. His brother was an honorary executive director in any company. Oh, brother, a letter came. वो चिट्ठी चला गया प्रधानमंत्री का दफ्तर में पीओएमओ में पहुंच गया प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स ऑफिस एंड नो टाइम एट ऑल बस एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर ऑल ऑल एवरीथिंग इज ऑल फाइन आप कहते हैं हमारा सरकार काम नहीं करता है बहुत ढीला है हमारा ब्यूरोक्रेट्स काम नहीं करने चाहते बरा कभी कभी तो इतना जल्दी काम करते हैं लोग को आश्चर्य कर देते हैं <laughs> और भी ऐसे बहुत सारे उदाहरण है संतोष बगरोडिया कलकत्ता का रहने वाले हैं मैं भी कलकत्ता का रहने वाला हूँ मगर वो अभी राजस्थान में राज्यसभा का सांसद था उनका भाई का कंपनी को मिल गया अरे वो बोला मैं मैं क्या कर सकता हूँ हमारा भाई कोई बिजनेस कर रहा है हमारा भाई के साथ हमारा रिश्ता नहीं है हम क्या कर सकते एक और डीएमके का राज्य मंत्री थे सूचना और प्रसारण मंत्रालय में जगत रक्षाकन वो भी ही वॉज ऑल्सो सेविंग द वर्ल्ड हिज ब्रदर ऑल्सो गॉट अ कोल ब्लॉक इन दिस केस The situation was very, very even more grave, and in certain senses even more scandalous. And you know why? The person who was in charge of the Ministry of Coal was none other than the Prime Minister himself, Dr. Manmohan Singh. <coughs> Remember, it's not happened very often. Dr. Manmohan Singh has replied twice in Parliament to reports by the Controller and Auditor General of India. Dr. Manmohan Singh has been questioned by the CBI. Magar CBI ka kahani bhi aur kuch hai. Apna Ranjit Sinha sahab, unho ne nirdeshak te CBI ke. Supreme Court ke adesh mein inka jaj chal rahe te, investigation chal rahe. Jisko aap investigate kar rahe, jiske upar jaj kar rahe, unhi ko aap ne sab kuch dikha diya. Ashwini Kumar ji, our law minister, he had to put in his papers. Supreme Court, in open court, said, 
is the CBI a caged parrot? Is the CBI a tote me pijra? This is supposed to be India's premier investigating agency. And what happened to Mr. Ranjit Sinha? You know that. I don't need to tell you about that. He was meeting a lot of people, especially at his home, after office hours. What happened after that? You said the economy is going to be disrupted. <coughs> India, despite having substantial reserves of coal, we are importing about 20% of our requirements of coal. 20% coal we are importing. Supreme Court intervenes. Supreme Court cancels the allotments of over 200 coal blocks that have been allotted. And as we are talking, again that auction process is on. Why couldn't you auction it earlier? Dr. Manmohan Singh himself told PC Parak, who was a school secretary, that this coal block should be publicly auctioned. His own government takes eight years to change the law. And after the law has been changed, they don't notify the rules. And when the Supreme Court cancels the allotment of over 200 coal blocks, which were allotted all the way from 1992 to 2010, you say the economy is being disrupted? And the coal auctions are now on. And once again, the CAG, which says 1,86,000 crore loss, again those figures are turning out to be correct. Let's talk a little bit about another subject. And that's iron ore. Steel is made from iron ore. Two districts in southern India. Bellari in Karnataka, Anandpur in Andhra Pradesh. Some of the most valuable iron ore which is found in India is located in these two districts. There were the Beijing Olympics in 2008 and suddenly there was a internationally, there was a big demand for iron ore across the world. The prices shot up. And even the, the kind of iron ore which were called fines, which could not be exported earlier, suddenly there was a big demand for it. <coughs> and what happened after that was truly astonishing, truly astonishing. And that is, one person, his name is Gali Janardhan Reddy. He was a minister in Yadurappa's government. Yadurappa's government was the first government in southern India, which was led by the Bharatiya Janata Party and completed a full term. On the other side of the border was the Congress government in Andhra Pradesh, then still united, headed by Y.S. Rajshekar Reddy. And his son, who's now set up his own party, Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy. Jagan Mohan Reddy is one of the richest politicians in the country. If you just look at his assets, official figures that are given to the Election Commission of India. <coughs> if you're a politician and you have to fight elections, you have to declare your assets, the value of your assets, that of your family members, and so on and so forth. And according to these, Jagan Reddy comes through as one of the most, uh, one of the richest politicians in the country. It's very interesting what happens. In these two adjoining districts, one in Andhra Pradesh and the other, in Karnataka, they keep removing the borders. It's as if the markers which demarcate the two borders between the two states, the two provinces, keep getting changed. And in no time at all, the iron ore just peaks. It's exported 
through the ports of Andhra Pradesh, almost all of it to China. And unlike spectrum, like coal, I don't know, is a non-renewable resource. So once this iron ore is converted into steel, it forms part of buildings and stadia, a stadium, like the famous Nest Stadium, which was there in the Beijing Olympics. And it's never going to come back to your, your country. <coughs> it's gone for good. And not only have you taken away resources that belong to the people of the country, there was a huge fraud which was detected by thanks to a few honest officers. And one of them was Justice Santosh Reddy. He was the Lok Ayukt, the people's ombudsman in Karnataka. He, together with a few honest officers, they found out how this kind of total devastation has happened. Gali Janardhan Reddy was the son of a police constable in a place called Kaul's Bazaar in Bellari. And he, with his group, I should call it the Mafia, they looted these resources. And I'm using these words deliberately. And everybody knew that was what happening. Now, interestingly, you had a body called the IBM, Indian Bureau of Mines. It is headquartered in your state in Nagpur. It is supposed to be a regulatory authority. It's a separate matter that it has very limited powers to punish. Kisi ko saza dene ka shamta nahi hai. Wo jaise hota na, wo kutta wo bhokte hain, chor ko dara dete hain. Magar chor ko malum nahi hai ki kutta kaatna nahi aata, kutta daat nahi hai. To bhokna aata, usko kaatna nahi aata tha. But this IBM ka report, jua tha, it, the same report, which was a central government ministry of mines report, said that 90%, 90% plus of the mining that was taking place in these two districts was illegal. It was violating some law or the other. It was violating either a state law or a central law. <coughs> but you completely turned a blind eye. हमारे जो बड़े-बड़े अधिकारी हैं वो गांधी जी का वो तीन बंदर की तरह बुरा ना सुना बुरा मत कहा and after the loot had happened suddenly everybody woke up अरे क्या हो रहे and I believe and I believe and I'm saying this publicly that this loot of these resources that belong to you and me and your children and my children and their children who may not be born today, that these resources were looted to benefit two of the largest political parties in this country. Mr. Yadurappa had to resign. He belonged to the Bharti Janta Party. Jagan Mohan Reddy and YSR Reddy, before they before Jagan Mohan formed his own party after YSR's death in a helicopter crash. They belong to the Indian National Congress. And those cases are going on as we are talking. You allow the loot to happen, and then what happens? You suddenly wake up, there is screaming and shouting, Justice Hegde has come up with a report. He's showing, he's giving you hard evidence of how the mafia operated, how the racket was going on, and how the loot was taking place of resources that belong to the people of this country. And you kept quiet. Then you wake up. Gali Janadan Reddy was arrested. <coughs> he spent three years in jail. Three years. In Chanchalguda jail in Hyderabad and in between in Bangalore. But like you know, some of our VIP prisoners, you move from the jail to the hospital and the hospital to the jail. You fall ill, you know that of course. Even the Jagan Mohan Reddy had to spend more than one year behind bars. 
You know, when the CBI raided Gali Janathan Reddy, they were astonished. They were astonished with the jewelry they found in his house. You know, they, he, they found a throne which was gold plated. He was going back to the days of the medieval India, the, the Rajas and the Maharajas, where you sat on a throne where it was made of gold. And this was happening in India, in, in your India, in my India, it's, it's not today. It's just been barely one and a half months that Gali Janathan Reddy was, has been given bail. He tried to bribe a judge. The judge was also, through his brother, both the judge and the brother were put behind bars. <coughs> but the pattern that you see is interesting. The resources have been misallocated, the resources have been mispriced, the resources have been looted, and after that you've taken action. Let me now come to the fourth and final segment of my talk. And this concerns natural gas, prakritic gas. This is gas that is found below the ocean in the Bay of Bengal, off the coast of the southeastern coast of India, along the bed of two of the largest rivers of India, and especially southern India, the Krishna and the Godavari. And this is gas which is, again, a natural resource, Again, something that is supposed to belong to the people of this country. Now, the government has a contract. It's called the production sharing contract. It signs a contract with a company which is called Reliance Industries Limited. Its head is Sri Mukesh Dhirubhai Ambani. Uh, he happens to be one of the richest men, if not the richest man in India. Some would say he's also one of the richest men in the world, though there is a bit of a dispute about whether Sri Dilip Shangvi of Sang Pharma has more money than him, but that's another story. His family owns a building which is 27 storied. It's called Antila. If you go to Mumbai, you'll see it. It's on Altamount Road, next to Warden Road and Pedder Road. Uh, it's a 27-story building for a family of five. <laughs> and I don't know how many uh, people help them out. But I was told they don't even live there most of the time. Kisine kaha koi vastu ka kuch idhar udhar. Kisine kuch bataya? Pata nahi hoon. Waha pe kabhi kabhi rehte hai bhai saad loog mein. Antilla is a mythical island in the mythical country of Atlantis, over which there is now an ocean which separates Europe and the Americas, and Africa and the Americas. <laughs> what happened was that this production sharing contract was signed between this company at a time when the family was united. The two brothers were together. But what I've sought to argue in my book was that the real reason why the late Dhirubhai Ambani's business empire, which was built from scratch, he was a, a, a petrol station attendant in Aden, and he became India's biggest industrialist, Sapsibra, Kroorpati, Poonjipati, Udyogpati, Ban gaye bhai sahab ne. How, why did his business empire got partitioned? Why was it partitioned by half? Why did the two brothers fight with each other? Now you might say the real reason why the brothers fought with each other is because Nita ji and Tina ji didn't get along with each other. Ho sakta hai. Main man li aapka baat. Ho sakta hai. Mira Kanahan, the real reason 
the most important reason why Dhirubhai Ambani's empire got partitioned was because of gas from the Krishna Godavari Basin. That's what I've argued in my book. Because Anil Ambani's company, Reliance Natural Resources Limited, wanted this gas. And this gas was to be transported through a pipeline more than 2,000 kilometers from the southeastern coast of India to a place called Dadri near Delhi. Where what was supposed to come up was not just India's biggest gas-based power plant, but Asia's biggest gas-based power plant. But that never came up. Anil Ambaniji thought that he would get the gas at a price of $2.34 per unit for a 17-year period. <clears throat> Why? Why? Because Reliance Industries Limited had offered the gas at $2.34 a unit for 17 years to the government-owned, the public sector company, NTPC, Yaniki National Thermal Power Corporation. But that stuck in court. And the brother said, no, I will not give it to you. And I believe that was the principal reason why the two fell out with each other and the empire of Dhirubhai Ambani got partitioned into two. The story doesn't end here. So the story just begins over here. The controller and auditor general comes in and he says, what kind of a contract have you signed? Production sharing contract. And you are having what is called gold plating. It is a little complicated and the book gives you all the technical details and the commercial details. What do you understand by gold plating? Under the sea, you want to extract gas. It's a risky business, it's a difficult business, it's an expensive business. You have to invest a lot of money in very, very expensive equipment. So the production sharing contract says that you can sell the gas and the cost that you incur, you can recover it. But the controller and auditor general says the way this contract was structured, you encouraged the private contracting party, in this case the company headed by Reliance Industries Limited, was encouraged to spend more. I am drinking ठीक है जी ये एक प्लास्टिक के बोतल में पानी पी रहा हूँ मैं एक ग्लास का कप में भी पानी पी सकता हूँ मैं एक शीशा का इन ग्लास ग्लास I can drink the water or I can drink the same water in a gold plated goblet it's a wonderful cup plated with gold and I can drink the water I'm still drinking water but what I am drinking in is different. So that's what the CAG alleged. Ye aarop lagaya ki aapne zyada kharch kiya. Aur ye sarkar ke liye aur sarkar ke hit mein nahi hai, desh ke hit mein nahi hai. This is against the interests of the exchequer. Phir ek EGOM, empowered group of ministers, was set up. Or bala dam barado. 2.34 dollars per unit ko se isko banado. 4.20 dollars per unit. Or many ek Bharat Sarkar ka mantri usko wo pad se bahar nikal gaya tha. Uska naam hai Mani Shankar Ayer. Ek meeting ke andar unhe ne bola कि ये जब EGOM इसका कीमत बढ़ा दिया 2.34 डॉलर्स पर यूनिट तू 4.20 डॉलर्स पर यूनिट हर भारतीय ये समझते हैं what 420 means मैंने नहीं कुछ कहा मंत्री जी ने कहा what is the meaning of 420 
Now, who headed that committee? The empowered group of ministers was headed by the then foreign minister of India, the external affairs minister of India, who happens to be today the president of India. And Rashtrapati ji ka naam aap sab log jante hai? Wo hamare tarah Bengali ji, Bengali hai, Pranob Babu. Then what happens, you have another minister, Manishankar Ayer's portfolio has changed. You have Murli Devara who becomes a minister. Then you have a big hue and cry, CAG ne kya kaha? Gas ka jo utpadan tha, wo das guna kam ho gaya. To log keh rahe, itna paisa hamne kharcha kiya. कारखाना बनाने के लिए विद्युत उत्पादन के लिए फर्टिलाइजर खाद बनाने के लिए पाइपलाइंस तैयार हो गया पब्लिक सेक्टर गेल गैस अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया लिमिटेड मगर गैस नहीं आ रहे क्यों नहीं आ रहे तो फिर सीएजी बोला आपको जिस जगह में एक्सप्लोरेशन करना था उसका आपने सिर्फ दस फीसदी जगह में आपने और बाकी जगह कहाँ पर अभी भी है सरकार से पूछा आपने क्यों जमीन वापस नहीं लिया पिक्यूलियर सॉर्ट ऑफ लैंड ग्रैब under the sea land grab over the surface of the earth your SEZs are grabbing land under the surface of the sea also people are grabbing land you were supposed to dig a certain number of wells you didn't dig I'm not saying all this the CAG is saying all this so there's a hue and cry then you bring in a new minister his name is Jepal Reddy after some years Mr. Jepal Reddy is also kicked upstairs as they say no laat maar ke upar bhez diya unko usko science and technology minister bana diya और सरकार के अंदर भी विवाद आ गया देर इज अ कैबिनेट मीटिंग वेर द हाउस वॉज जस्ट देर वर फोर इन फेवर ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग द प्राइस ऑफ गैस फ्रॉम फोर पॉइंट टू जीरो टू डबल एट टू एट पॉइंट फोर डॉलर पर यूनिट देर वर फोर मिनिस्टर्स इन फेवर एंड फोर मिनिस्टर्स अपोज टू इट द फोर मिनिस्टर्स हु इन फेवर ऑफ इट वॉज मिस्टर चिदम्बरम दी देन फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर मिस्टर वीरापा मोइली द पेट्रोलियम एंड नेचुरल गैस मिनिस्टर Mr. Kapil Sibal, the law minister, Mr. Anand Sharma, the industry and commerce minister, and who were the four people against it? Jaipal Reddy, science and technology minister, Jairam Ramesh, minister of state for rural development, Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, the power minister, Srikant Jena, the fertilizers minister. Power is affected because gas is used for power. Gas is used for fertilizers. Gas can also be used for your cooking. for your transportation and yes we are importing 40% of our total requirements of gas gas is a cleaner fuel than diesel or petrol it pollutes the environment less so this was the scenario until the election commission of india intervenes and says you can't increase the price of gas and the new government has a new formula and the price of gas is not increased to the extent that it was supposed to be increased after my book came out i was served four legal notices and it was a coincidence but on the day the book was launched on the 15th of april 2014 gopal krishna gandhi who's related to the father of the nation mondas karamchand gandhi he is former governor of west bengal he was a former civil servant at a public speech given in new delhi's vigyan bhavan in front of thousands of people gopal gandhi said reliance has become a parallel state we had a parallel economy now we have a parallel state it's not me he said it it was widely reported he said never before in the history of this country has one company one firm exercised so much control over country's resources its natural resources its human resources its financial resources its professional resources as the house of the ambanis i never said it he said it It was a coincidence that it happened on the day the book was launched on the 15th of April. The next day, I got the legal notice. Man, honey, you have done it. They said you've described him as an oligarch. 
Then the younger brothers' companies, lawyers, they served me another legal notice. Then the third legal notice came saying, pay 100 crores in 10 days. <laughs> My wife was very upset. He says, you don't even have one crore. We'll be out on the street. I said, don't worry. They haven't moved court yet. They not only tried to harass me and intimidate me, they tried to harass Amazon, Flipkart. Even a young woman who sent out these notices uh, by email saying that there was a function happening, even she was served a legal notice. The, all this happened in April 2014, May 2014. Today we are in March 2015. They haven't moved court. They said, you're an interested party. I said, yes, I'm an interested party. Why? I'm a member of the governing council of a non-government organization called Govern Common Cause. And Common Cause is one of the petitioners. There are various cases and various arbitration matters which are in different levels, including the Supreme Court of India. And therefore, I'm an interested party. I said, yes. He said, you have described Mr. Mukesh Ambani as an oligarch. I said, yes. I said, take me to court. Then they said, you have suggested that the Ambani's put pressure and because of that pressure, Mr. Manishankar Ayer's portfolio was changed and Mr. Jaipal Reddy was kicked upstairs. So I said, if anybody should be feeling defamed, I think it should be the former Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh. Because he is the Prime Minister, he decides who in his cabinet and council of ministers gets with which portfolio. The fact is, they haven't moved court. They described this book, which runs into 600 pages as a pamphlet. They have bought out their own book called The Flame of Truth, which I would like to describe as a pamphlet. <laughs> you can get it on their website. Before I conclude my speech, and I think I've spoken to you much longer than I should have, I want to read out to you one section one small section, two paragraphs, and I won't tell you who wrote it or who said it. Only after I finish reading it out will I tell you who has written it and who has spoken this. This was made sometime in the month of June 2010. It's in English, so I'll read it out to you in English. <clears throat> a small portion of our population over the past two decades has been chanting incessantly for increased privatization of the material resources of the community. And some of them even doubt whether the goals of equality and social justice are capable of being addressed directly. They argue that economic growth will eventually trickle down and lift everyone up. For those at the bottom of the economic and social pyramid, it appears that the nation has forsaken those goals as unattainable at best and unworthy at worst. The new liberal agenda has increasingly eviscerated the state of stature and power, bringing vast benefits to the few, modest benefits for some, while leaving everybody else, the majority, behind. We have heard a lot about free markets and the freedom to market. We must confess that we were perplexed by the extent to which it was pressed that contractual arrangements between private parties with the state and amongst themselves could displace the obligations of the state to the people. History has repeatedly shown that a culture of uncontained greed along with uncontrolled markets leads to disasters. Historically and all across the globe, 
predatory forms of capitalism seem to organize themselves first and foremost around the exploit around the extractive industries that seek to Im exploit the vast but exhaustible natural resources water forests minerals and oil they are all being privatized and not being satisfied the voices that speak for predatory capitalism seek more who, who do you think said something like this che guevara before he died fidel castro when he was 40 years old no this is a judge of the supreme court of india justice sudarshan reddy in his judgment in the famous case ambani versus ambani this are his words and i tell you why do we have what is called a resource curse हमारे देश के जो प्राकृतिक संसाधन है एक अभिशाप क्यों हो गया जो लोगों के लिए जो जो संपद है जो संसाधन है इंस्टेड ऑफ बेनिफिटिंग देम इट बिकम्स अ कर्स मदर नेचर्स ब्लेसिंग बिकम्स अ कर्स यू सी इट अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड यू सी इट इन अफ्रीका यू सी इट इन लैटिन अमेरिका यू सी इट इन इंडिया यू सी इट इन द सदर्न हेमिस्फियर एंड वाई वाई हैव बी नॉट लर्न फ्रॉम द मिस्टेक्स <coughs> a Sierra Leone is a small country Liberia is a small country the the former president of Liberia Charles Taylor was indicted by the international court, international court of justice he's the same guy who gave Naomi Campbell the model a diamond the size of a golf ball these were blood diamonds behind those diamonds people were killed they were massacred why is it that we have the red corridor across more than one fourth of the geographical area of this country as they say from pashupati in the himalayas to tirupati not far from the bay of bengal the richest lands with the poorest people richest in terms of wealth forest wealth above the surface mineral wealth below the surface of the earth the most biodiverse parts of india with the poorest people the adivasis where left wing extremism where where the so called maoism naxalism is at its peak where officers don't want to go where we have have a vicious cycle the same area the same problem which former prime minister dr manmohan singh said india's biggest internal security threat he said it again and again and again <clears throat> dr manmohan singh traveled across the world he went to tokyo and london and new york and washington he went everywhere he didn't find time in 10 years to visit gadchiroli once or dantewada once or purulia i'm stating facts for you so we have this as a huge problem in our country you say law and order because of law and order no development because of no development no law and order because of no law and order no justice because of no law and order and no justice you have more inequality the gap between the rich and the poor is widening an adivasi woman doesn't want to go to a police station to register a first information report because she fears that the policeman will then rape her also i mean look at the vicious cycle that we have gone into you have more no mobile towers no schools no roads no drinking water no toilets for girls no law and order therefore no development so we are going through this huge journey and i don't want to end on a pessimistic note main nahi samajhta hu ki hamare desh ke bhavishya ekdam andhkar hai nahi ji main aashawadi hu because of people like you you are young people you will live in a better india than the india that i have lived in or my parents lived in you want to change this society don't you and i wish you will we are old fogies we are we will be dead and gone day after tomorrow today is a sad day in my life my former boss vinod mehta one of 
one of the finest journalists and editors of this country, he passed away. I worked under him for all five years, a little longer. Before I came here, I wrote a little obituary about him. It's your generation that has to change. Your generation has to see that the resources that belong to the people of this country truly benefit the people of the country. Remember that the darkest hour is just before the dawn. And you are the dawn, you are the future. And I thank you very much for listening to me. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for an extremely enlightening session in terms of what exactly are the ill effects of the lack of governance, what exactly are the problems when you have governance being hijacked by a set of principles which is completely alien to the concerns of the people. Having had said that, I would throw this open for questions as well as comments. The one request being the same one that we have been making till date, just see to it that every question is very pertinent to whatever has been raised over here. Please do not stray and keep it as far as is possible, very precise, very concise. Do not go in for lengthy prefaces at all. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, awareness बहुत जरूरी है और साथ साथ पारदर्शिता का बहुत जरूरी है Transparency is very important. You can't have these things done quietly behind closed doors. You have to, when you have a public auction, even auctions I know can be rigged, even contracts can be rigged, even tenders can be rigged, but surely it's a better way than to allot these resources behind closed doors. Today, we have the day and age of electronic, uh, sorry, information technology. It can be done electronically. Today, we have coal and telecom are being, they're e-auctions, they're electronic auctions. So everybody knows how the whole bidding process is done. There are set of clearly defined rules and there is complete transparency. I think awareness is very important and awareness among ordinary people and greater understanding of these processes will lead to greater transparency in the working of those who are in positions of power and authority. And you as, as members of civil society will act as the check and balance so that those who are in positions of power and authority do not misuse or abuse their discretionary powers. So you can hold them accountable. And, and very honestly, I, I, I mean it when I say I'm optimistic. If uh, Professor Palshikar knows more than me about this subject, if you look at the last few elections that we've had, 1996, 98, 99, 2004, 2009, roughly 40% of the members of parliament were not re-elected. In 2014, this proportion went up even higher, well over 60%, I think, if I'm not know the exact proportion. So ordinary people are not fools, you know. I think uh, the voter, she's getting more intelligent by the day. So. I think public awareness, public action, political action, civil society action have all become equally important to ensure at the end of the day, you will be working in your own interest, your own enlightened self-interest by ensuring there's greater transparency and greater accountability. This is my answer to you, what you have to say. Sir, now we have shown, uh, we have seen recently that there was a dip in the crude oil prices and we were, and it was being claimed that the government was not passing that, uh, what we say, uh, the benefit to the common consumers like us. There was uh, some of nexus 
that was existing, which uh, the refining companies were being benefited. I saw your uh, two or three discussions on Rajya Sabha television, but you were not, uh, they were not allowing you to make your point. Can you please clarify? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think I made my point. Uh, Dekhi, uh, this government and the country has been incredibly lucky. Crude oil prices in the month of June last year, 2014, were about $115 a barrel. In January, it had come down to below $50 a barrel. Now it has gone up to around 60, little more than $60 a barrel. It's very important for India. Why? India is importing about 80%. More than three-fourths, almost 80% of our total requirements of crude oil. And crude oil accounts for almost about one-third of the total imports the country makes. So, if these crude oil prices come down, <coughs> the government benefits. Now, what has happened in the recent past is that the government has passed on roughly one-third of the benefits to the consumer. The remaining two-thirds of the benefit has gone to the government itself. Why? Because the government has increased the excise duties. The excise duties on these uh, various petroleum products like petrol and diesel uh, have gone up. So the government has been able to mop up about two-thirds of the benefits of the, what we say, sudden, unexpected windfall gains from the fall in crude prices. And that's also a very important reason why the inflation rate has also come down. Our country's mudra has become so low, which you have to pay for the price of 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 the 40 kilometer or 20 kilometer mein chal rahe. Wo raftar kam ho gaya. Uh, it's a far more complex issue. You know why? Because the states are also losing money because sales tax is an important source of revenue for the state governments. And this whole oil business is a very complicated business because the other side of the fall in international crude oil prices <coughs> is that the international economy is not in a good shape. Western Europe is in recession. This means that our country's exports are suffering. They are also suffering. Because the imports have fallen and so have our exports. So the goods that we import from abroad, they are also suffering. Because the imports have fallen and so have our exports. So the goods that we export to other parts of the world, that have also fallen. And the slowdown is only not just confined to Europe. It's happened in Russia. Uh, is in recession, Japan is in recession, and even China, the rate of growth of China has come down. China had been growing at more than 10% for 30 years, almost 30 years. The official figures now, it says it's now growing at about 7%. And in India too, it's had an impact. So my personal view is that this has been a blessing in the short run. But in the medium term and long term, uh, our problems are not over. That's my, that's my view. Uh, and the facts I'm giving you are facts. They're available in the economic survey. You can argue that the government should have given much more benefit to the consumer. I will go along with you. Few hours after the presentation of the budget by Mr. Arun Jaitley, the finance minister, on the 28th of February, a few hours later, the price of diesel and the price of petrol went up by more than uh, about three rupees a liter. That has a cascading effect. It has an impact on all various commodities that are transported. Sir, so if you look at the history of Indian economy, after 1991, when uh, license was spread, then we see number of scams coming over. And do you think that the formation of a strong regulatory committee would solve the problem? Okay. Uh, two questions, and they are not easy questions to answer. You have said that you have said that the Bank of Bharatiya Reserve Bank, the governor, Dr. Raghuram Rajan, Unka kehna hai ki earlier we had crony socialism, now we have crony capitalism. Maine nahi kaha, unho nahi kaha. To us samay humara crony 
यारानी समाजवाद था अभी यारानी पूंजीवाद का समय चल रहा देखिए दिस इज अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ अ लॉन्गर डिस्कशन एंड मे बी सम अदर टाइम और इन प्राइवेट आई कैन टेल यू इन द नेम ऑफ अ मिक्स्ड इकोनॉमी वाई डिड वी हैव अ मिक्सड अप इकोनॉमी क्रोनी सोशलिज्म एंड नाउ क्रोनी कैपिटलिज्म and we can discuss this in greater detail but one point that you rightly raised was the issue of regulation niyantran the problem that we've had in setting up the regulatory systems in our country is that there's been a time lag between the process of liberalization and putting together regulation aaj bhi koila ke upar regulator nahi hai रियल एस्टेट रेगुलेटर नहीं है हाईवेज के ऊपर रेगुलेटर नहीं है दो वी हैव पब्लिक प्राइवेट पार्टनरशिप्स इन ऑल दीज एरियाज द सिक्योरिटीज एंड एक्सचेंज बोर्ड ऑफ इंडिया वॉज एम्पावर्ड ओनली आफ्टर दर सीरीज ऑफ स्कैंडल्स वन द हर्षद मेहता स्कैंडल द अदर द केतन पारिक स्कैंडल सिमिलरली इन द केस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वी हैव अ नंबर ऑफ इंस्टेंसेज वी डोंट हैव अ रेगुलेटर फॉर द कोल इंडस्ट्री the problem with a lot of the regulation and the regulatory authorities and i can give the example from the this book also the dgh the directorate general of hydrocarbons is that the regulatory authority is often like an extension of the bureaucracy trai telecom regulatory authority of india the majority of the people who have headed the trai were former secretaries of the department of telecommunications so bureaucrats and often bureaucrats who have been very loyal bureaucrats after they retire they are given a job as reg- at the head of the regulatory authority almost like a reward for being nice guys to ye samasya kafi jatil hai regulatory authority ke paas ek shamta nahi rehta aur kabhi kabhi shamta rehne ke baad bhi wo kaam nahi karte kuch so even when the regulator is empowered you have a curious situation of what is called the rr the reluctant regulator he is reluctant to regulate and this is a, a subject of a lot of uh, we can have a longer discussion on this but the point is uh, this is true whether you believe in socialism or capitalism it's got nothing to do with your personal ideology and whether you believe in liberalization or free markets or socialism or something if you are going to have the private sector play an important role in the economy then you have to put in place regulatory mechanisms that work and there are different kinds of regulatory mechanisms why is it that in our case you had a telecom scam you have a coal scam you have a gas scam you have a iron ore scam and it, you only have to wait for the supreme court of india to intervene obviously there's a failure on the part of the other organs of society the the executive and the political leadership and one of them is the failure to put in place effective and robust regulatory mechanisms uh, sir my question is regarding to land acquisition act okay the land acquired by the government from the lord but the benefit goes to lord as per the market and the person who belong to the you know that conti- uh, the field the worker is belong to the field his earning is belong to the field whether he get any kind of benefit from the project ye bhi kafi ek jatil samasya hai magar dekhiye agar bhumi aap adhigran kar rahe hain aap kisi log ka jeevika bhi sath sath le rahe hain and it's not just the owners of the land it could be those who work on the land they could be the landless worker or the small land holder the government is arguing that we are not anti farmer we are going to give two to four times the amount of money to the person who loses the land is part of the rehabilitation package the problem is as follows the problem is in the valuation of land ek to hota circle rate wo jaan bujh ke wo valuation niche ho jata hai most importantly most of the land the transactions that take place in land in our country there is a substantial portion of black money involved jo aap kabhi kagaz mein aap nahi dikhate hain in order to reduce payment of stamp duty 
यू डिलिब्रेटली अंडर वैल्यू द लैंड कि आपको हम जमीन बेच रहे हैं आप इतना हमें सफेद व्हाइट मनी में दीजिए और बाकी आप ब्लैक मनी में दीजिए तो अगर व्हाइट मनी इतना कम पोर्शन होता ऑफ द टोटल वैल्यूएशन लैंड तो फिर आप इसका दोगुना चार गुना भी पैसा दे दीजिए एज कॉम्पनसेशन एज मुआवजा यू आर स्टिल बेली रीचिंग द मार्केट वैल्यू सो आई थिंक दैट्स द इशू दैट्स वन इशू विद द लैंड एक्विजिशन एक्ट द सेकेंड इशू इज द कॉन्सेंट क्लॉज एंड द सोशल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट इन द केस ऑफ सर्टन काइंड ऑफ पब्लिक प्राइवेट पार्टनरशिप्स including building a private hospital or a private educational institution you want to reduce the consent level from 80% of the owners of the land to 50% and do away with it in certain other cases so this is the reason why uh, the ordinance to amend the law the 2013 law LARR is become so controversial and contentious comment about the business houses acquiring media channels business houses acqu acquiring media, media channels. channels that means yeah. ambani group uh, ambani is own they are one of the biggest media owners ha ji aap ye loktantra hai na anybody can buy anything can it uh, pollute the democracy system of you see we don't have any restrictions on anybody owning the media channel political parties can own it big business houses can own it what we need is aware people people who are aware of who owns it's not just mr uh, reliance industries limited that is owning the network 18 group and a large part of the inadu group they bring out a large number of television channels including cnbc cnbc awards ibn ibn cn cnn ibn money life all these things there are other groups also Mr Kumar Mangalam Birla's controls uh, about more than 27% of the living media group which brings out Aaj Tak uh, and um, India Today uh, Mr Abhay Oswal's company Oswal Green Tech owns about 17% of NDTV New Delhi Television earlier uh, the Reliance Industries group had given a loan to the same company Uh, there are so many other business houses who are owning uh, media organizations you could argue that the corporate control over the media means that that particular media organization will not publish or put on air or broadcast anything that will be critical of that that's not that's to be expected my classmate and uh, old schoolmate Dr Chandran Mitra is a part owner and the editor of the Pioneer newspaper. He is a member of parliament belonging to the Bharatiya Janata Party. Now if I read his paper I don't expect to read anything which is critical of the Bharatiya Janata Party. By no because he is the editor and the owner. So if you are aware of who owns which paper then you are an informed citizen. Then you read some other paper. today we have so many websites we have the social media today uh, that you have the choice of so many media outlets so once again if you know who owns who what it's important so there is political ownership there's corporate ownership and you could argue and i'll agree with you that uh, it kind of reduces and constrict diversity जो आप हिंदी में कहेंगे विविधता द प्लूरैलिटी एंड द हेट्रोजेनाइटी ऑफ व्यूज एंड डिफरेंट पॉइंट्स ऑफ व्यू ऑफ कोर्स इट डज इट डज रिस्ट्रिक्ट इट बट इन इंडिया वी डोंट हैव एनी रिस्ट्रिक्शंस ऑन क्रॉस मीडिया ओनरशिप सो दिस इज द वे इट इज इन दिस कंट्री सो यू शुड रीड अदर पेपर्स गो टू अदर वेबसाइट्स डोंट रिस्ट्रिक्ट योर reading or your viewing to one particular publication or one particular television channel and about the media we have a even a more unusual situation we are the only country in the world which calls itself a democracy and not only a, a democracy but the world's largest democracy when news and current affairs on radio is still a monopoly of bharat sarkar akashvani all india radio it's very unusual 
you get news in a roundabout way in the 250 FM radio stations and the 150 community radio stations, and these numbers are going to grow up, uh, grow many fold in the coming years. So, this is a very different thing. Lok Madhyam or Vividita or the absence of diversity. And this is maybe the subject of some other, another discussion. I've spoken at the Pune University on this. So, do you think that uh, this uh, crony capitalism can suppress the uh, market entrepreneurs to achieve greater heights? And even if they are aided by the Mudra Bank, uh, means Mudra Bank project is, that is introduced by the uh, government this time? Look, we don't see the relationship between I don't see the relationship. I hope we don't continue to have the kind of crony capitalism. Everybody says it's bad, no? I am not the only person. Governor of RBI, Rahuram Rajan says it's bad. Narendra Modi says it's bad. Arun Jaitley says it's bad. Sonia Gandhi says it's bad. Rahul Gandhi says it's bad. So everybody says it's bad, so we should not have it. Fine, good. Hopefully, there will be less of it. To link it with financial inclusion, with the Samavesh, Jandhan Yojana is a slightly different issue. Jandhan Yojana is a different issue. Uh, yes, I believe every household, there should be at least one member with a bank account. It is a fact, uh, according to the government, between the 15th of August and I think the middle of February, I think 12 and a half crore new bank accounts have been opened. But the truth is that 75% of these bank accounts don't have any money. So this is absolutely true, it is true that you have opened all 12 crore new bank accounts, but there is no money in 75 feet of bank accounts, so okay, you start, this is the first step you have taken, you have taken the first step of Vitya Samavesh, financial inclusion is a desirable goal, but we have a long way to go. So I am not exactly able to link the two which you have tried to. What, what is the Mudra project? I see, okay, okay. That's a separate project altogether. I think the government should be doing much more for the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, other backward classes. If you look at the recent budget, uh, many of these allocations have uh, come down. The responsibility has apparently moved from the union government or the central government to the state government. It is up to the state governments to ensure that more money is spent on these programs uh, which are supposed to help uh, SCs, STs, OVCs and uh, small, small and medium sized entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, we'll see, we'll hope, we'll hope something works out. I mean, it's early days, it's difficult to say how this has just been announced, this new scheme. We already have a small industries development bank, so many of these programs are new versions of old programs, including Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and a whole lot of others. So we have to see how the new programs are implemented. Have I been able to, I've tried to answer your question, I don't know enough about this subject. Hello? Uh, uh, sir, you are the writer of the book on the media ethics. The current SR case underlined the fact that how the relationship between the journalist and the, some corporations is changing. So, what will be the, your comment on this uh, case that uh, the editor of that uh, Hindustan Times just said that it was the, I consider it was my duty to have the sponsorship of the big corporations for the events of our group. So, how, what should be the measures and what should be the, uh, uh, measures should be taken to keep the uh, journalist uh, from the effect of these uh, corporations and their uh, money politics. I'll give you my personal opinion. This is not new. The Nira Radia conversations also showed this. There have been many, many other instances. Three journalists have put in their papers. One person for taking a taxi for one week or ten days another person for taking a taxi for one day, 
a third person for organizing a birthday party at a guest house in Delhi with two black label bottles thrown in. <coughs> Mr. Nitin Gadkari had a holiday on a yacht, but at that time he was not a min member, uh, a minister in the government. He was not the president of the Bharatiya Janata Party. I'm saying that, look, you have a nexus between business and politics. And that, to me, is the fountainhead of corruption, is the source of corruption. Jis tara se aapka kaladhan hamare desh ke chunao aur chunao vivastha mein lag jata hai, political parties ka funding jaise hote hai. This is again a, a huge subject, political funding, but let me make two or three points. Donations up to 20,000 rupees do not have to be accounted for, right? You can give 19,999 in black money 101 times to your favorite political party, your name will not appear anywhere. Forget your PAN number, forget your bank account number. That's point one. Secondly, there are no restrictions on what a political party can spend. There are restrictions on what an individual candidate can spend during the elections, according to the Representation of the People Act. Say, in the case of a Lok Sabha election, you can't spend more than 70 lakh rupees. It's a separate matter that many people don't spend even that amount of money. <coughs> I think this is just a small tip of the iceberg. There are journalists and there are journalists. In this nexus between business and politics, there are bureaucrats, there are criminals, and there are journalists. Of course there are journalists. They facilitate this nexus, this corrupt nexus. You can say in the case of journalists, they have a role to play in society, they are the fourth state, they are supposed to ensure greater transparency in society, they are supposed to ensure that, you know, uh, <coughs> hold accountable those who are our netas and our babus, and when they get corrupted, then also when they suppress information, when they put out slanted information, it's bad. Of course it's bad, because it influences you, because the media influences public opinion, because the media influences the opinions of the middle classes. Those who read, those who watch television, they, of course it has, it has a, a very, very pernicious and a bad effect. I totally agree with you. But what has been revealed in this particular case is a very small amount. There are journalists and there are journalists. And uh, if you will excuse me, I have a favorite analogy I often use. You know, there are dogs and there are dogs. Um, first class dog bites man, no news. Man bites dog news. Agar aadmi kutta ko kaatte hain, ye bhoat bada khabar ban jata hai. Kutta aadmi ko kaatte hain, isme naya khabar, isme to naya kuch nahi hai. Magar kutta kis ko kaat rahe hain ji? Agar kutta Narendra Modi ji ko kaat dete hain, ya Sonia Gandhi ko kaat dete hain, ya Vipasha Basu ko kaat dete hain, ye bhi khabar ban jata hain, jarur ban jata hain. Magar mera kehna, wohi dobara mein ne kaha na, woh alag alag kutta hota hai. There are dogs and there are dogs. There are watchdogs. Journalists are called watchdogs of society. Tick? But sometimes, you know, the watchdog can, as they say, the dog's bark is worse than his bite. Say, bhok na aata, kaat na nahi aata. Magar phir, phir bhi thik hai. Jo aap chor aaya aapka ghar mein, wo to dar gya na, bhok na shuru kar diya. Usko malum nahi hai, ek utta kaat na nahi aata. Phir thik hai, achcha kaam kya. Magar there are also lap dogs. Lap dogs, they sit very quietly. Godi mein chup chaap bethe rehte hain. Agar Godi kahi bara raj neta ka hai, koi bara udyog pati ke hai, koi bara sarkari officer hai, ek dam chup chaap bethe rehte hain. Woh apne aap ko patrakar kehte hain, magar sach moch woh stenographer hai. Woh job kehte hain, woh achche tarah se note kar lete hain. Alag alag kutta hota hai ji. Guide dogs bhi hota hai ne, jo ek andh vekti ko madad karte hain sarak par karne ke liye. Some drugs and explosives are in a pile of luggage, that dog can sniff it out. Switzerland, in St. Barnard, Kutta, people who are in a snowstorm or in a snowstorm, they are in a snowstorm. So, my question is just that there are different Kutta, different Patakar, different media. So, you have to take a slightly nuanced view. 
Yes, what has happened in the SR case is unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. They have revealed that there is a nexus and the media is sometimes a part of the nexus. This is a, the elite, the elite which is part of the nexus. And the media, there is a section of the media which is part of that elite. So there are bureaucrats, there are criminals, there are police officers, there are media people, they're all part of this corrupt nexus between business and politics. So that's my view. Thank you. Now what we would have is Dr. Parshikar making his points regarding everything that has gone in before. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It has been a rewarding evening and at the same time a uh, very disturbing evening in the sense that the kinds of cronisms uh, that uh, we have come across, not only in the field of capitalism, but also the nexus between the uh, capitalist corporate houses and the political parties on the one hand, the media houses and the industrial houses on the other hand, uh, do not really bode well for democracy. And therefore, I think this uh, discussion about crony capitalism would leave each one of us uh, with certain amount of questions, introspection in our own minds. Uh, it is really very good that the organizers have also suggested and shown interest in uh, getting the book in Marathi because that would, in a sense, give us a new vocabulary of understanding politics. Uh, I was just asking uh, my friend, Mr. Tukaram, how would you translate crony capitalism? Uh, both of us found that we didn't have a quick answer to that. Uh, but uh, from the stories of crony capitalism that the speaker brought out before us, uh, I thought that uh, rather than Yarana in Hindi and its translations into other languages like Marathi, etc., it would be better to call it something like Tolkya Cha Bandwalwad, uh, a capitalism of a mafia kind, where in a sense, a group constitutes itself into a mafia, but at the same time arrogates itself the status of elite in the society. And it is this arrogation that we need to be aware of. That's one part of the comment that I would like to make. The other thing I think, and that connects to the series of these lectures that uh, have been arranged, is the question of how you handle, how you look at these issues. And again and again, this question came up uh, both in the answers uh, that uh, Mr. Paranjay Guha Thakurta gave and he, in his main presentation, which is that while at, a, at an ideological level, one could argue that politics are always connected to capitalism and therefore there would be a tendency on the part of capitalism to control politics. It's necessary in democratic politics that before elections, and elections shouldn't be the only mechanism, before elections, you should have effective and workable mechanisms to stop these things from happening, to detect these things when they happen, and to punish these things once they have been detected. And one is not certain whether we have in India been successful in either of these three. Because we have mechanisms, but the mechanisms ordinarily don't work for stopping this. Like, for example, if one could go to the other extreme, the parliament has singularly failed to stop these things from happening, leave aside from discussing them up front. Here are political parties, and I am not an expert on law, therefore forgive me if I am saying something which I shouldn't be saying, but here are political parties which pay parliamentarians to vote in the parliament on a confidence motion. And we are not sure whether it is the privilege of the parliamentarian to take money and vote whatever way he or she likes, or it is the privilege of us as public to ask the parliamentarian whether we elected you for taking money and voting in the parliament. And recently in the United Kingdom, this in a different context, this issue has come up. And therefore, I think this self-regulatory mechanism right from parliament to every other organization, including the bureaucracy in this country, is something which has not been able to stop things from happening. 
which has not been able to detect things effectively and on time, and including the judiciary, we must also admit that we have not been able to punish once these things have been detected. And therefore, I think the other takeaway from this lecture would be not just the stories that he gave us, not just the lament of corruption, but the larger point is, has our democracy failed in governing democratically and yet efficiently, cleanly? And I think the issue of crony capitalism becomes important in a society when it fails institutionally to regulate such affairs. So I think these are the two main takeaways of this lecture. Uh, your questions have already indicated that the uh, points that have been made have reached home and therefore I need not say anything further on this. So thank you very much and thank you Mr. Thakur. Bye. Bye.